we want to talk about um, surfaces. And before we do, I want to just kind of remind you of some things that you already know. Um, first off, each time you put a, if you have like two dimensions, you put a constraint on there, so an equation that has to be satisfied, you go from the whole two-dimensional plane to only certain points. If you Each constraint you put on reduces the dimension by one, so for example, an equation like this is going to be, is going to leave you with a one-dimensional curve, right? In this case, it's a line. So um, examples of this might be um, oh, x plus y equals 5, right? Here a is 1 and b is 1 and c is 5. That's just some kind of line. Of course, if a is 0, then we basically get uh, y equal to some constant. Um, that makes a horizontal line, right? This makes a line with some slope. Or if uh, b is 0, we would be able to get x alone. So we'd have x equal to some constant. That would make a vertical line. So we understand all of these cases. In each case, we have one constraint, and that leaves a one-dimensional um, curve, in this case a straight line, in two-dimensional space. Now, if you want to make it um, nonlinear, probably the simplest thing to do is to start adding in quadratic terms. Those would be terms where you have a variable times a variable. So, um, for example, in this case we might have um, if a is 1 and b is 0 and c is 1 and g is 1, then we have just a circle of radius 1. Right? Or um, maybe we have um, a is 1 and the rest of them are 0. Let's see, a is 1, so we have x squared. And then maybe e is 1, maybe g is 0. So here's an example, y equals negative x squared. Again, we get a one-dimensional curve here. Oops, I drew it wrong. We get a one-dimensional curve this time a parabola that's opening down. Okay, so we want to think about what are all the possible shapes that you can get if you restrict yourself just to having quadratic terms. Now before we go much further with this, I want to just make a little note. I don't expect you to be able to do this, but I want you to understand that it can be done. Um, I've included in here this cross term, b equals x times y. And actually, we don't have to worry about, if we're just thinking about what are the possible cases, we could always um, sort of rotate our coordinate system so that the cross term disappears. Here's an example. Um, we've got something here, right? It's quadratic because we have the highest degree is 2. We've got an x times a y, so a variable times another variable. That makes it quadratic, but I can rotate this out. Here's what I could do. I could let u equal x plus y and I could let v equal x minus y. So I'm coming up with a new coordinate system. Basically what I'm doing here is um, horizontal lines are lines of constant y, right? And vertical lines are lines of constant x. Um, lines of constant u would be lines of slope negative 1. So I'm changing it so that um, lines of constant u run this way. Okay, and then um, lines of constant v, those are lines of slope 1. So if you hold v at a constant, you can see you get the equation of a line with slope 1 and different intercepts depending on what that constant is. So basically I'm, I'm redoing, I'm going to redo the coordinate system so that the axes run this way and this way instead of having them be as usual. So this would be the x and the y axes. Here now we've got, let's see, I think this was the u and this was the make a u and a v axis. So we're just rotating the coordinate system. Watch what happens here. Let's see, in order to replace these, I had to solve these equations for x and y, but that's easy to do. If you add both equations, you get u plus v equals 2x because the y's disappear. If you subtract both equations, so u minus v, then x minus x, those disappear, and y minus minus y is y plus y, so you get 2y. So now we have x equals u plus v over 2 and y equals u minus v over 2. If I substitute those into this original equation, xy becomes u plus v over 2 times u minus v over 2 plus, let's see, x is u plus v over 2 and then we have equal to 1 there. So in this new rotated coordinate system, if I multiply this out, let's see, that's a, that's a difference of squares. u squared minus v squared over 4 plus u plus v over 2 equals 1. 
I think what I'll do is I'll multiply both sides through by 4 to clear out the fractions. u squared minus v squared. Um, if I multiply this by 4, I get a 2u and a 2v. And multiplying the right by 4, I get 4. Uh, now we recognize this is a hyperbola. In fact, we could complete the square on u squared. I would need to add 1 to complete the square on on uh, v here, I could factor out a negative, which would give me this. I need to add one here. So I've added one to the left, so I better add one to the right. But then I also subtracted one, so I better subtract one from the right. And we're down to this hyperbola. This, these first three make u plus 1 squared, and these, these terms here make v minus 1 squared. And then we have 4 over here. Oh, yeah. So this is what I'm saying. I don't expect you to be able to rotate these, but to realize if we're just considering what are the possibilities, we could always rotate out any cross term. And then if we, if we have, um, a, 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 as long as we have like a quadratic term to match, then we could always complete the square to absorb that. So for example, we had this x here, right? But after we rotated, we had a 2u and a 2v, right? Those are linear terms, but each one had a corresponding quadratic term, and so we could complete the square in order to absorb those into the squared term. So with that, I think we can analyze all the possible cases with something quadratic in two dimensions. So this is what your general quadratic constraint in two dimensions would look like. So you have an x squared term, an xy term, a y squared term, and then an x and a y, and then a constant. So that's the general case. Let's see what shapes we can come up with. Well, first off, we can get rid of this. We can just ignore the fact that there could be a cross term because we know that cross term could always be rotated out. Um, so consider the cases. What if a and c are both 0 so that there are no quadratic terms? Then you can see we just have the usual equation for a line. right? So. It's going to, they're going to make a curve. It's a one-dimensional curve, but it's actually, this curve is not curvy at all. It's straight. It's a line. Um, if there's only one square, so if one of the coefficients of one of the squared variables is 0, then um, we can ignore that. And then this term could always be, uh, we could always complete the square. So we might as well just Im f imagine that that term isn't there if we're just thinking about what are the possible shapes. And you can see that the shape we get in this case with one square is a parabola. Okay. Um, if we have two squares, then we could always complete the square. So we might as well ignore this term because it could be absorbed into that by completing the square. And this term could be absorbed in. And so we, we are going to have something like, we might as well ignore those linear ones and just say what's going to look like ax squared plus by squared equals, equals g. Now, we could divide through by g. We could even write it in this form, a squared over g by a plus y squared over g by b equals 1. And now we know that there are actually two cases. Um, if both of these are positive, so that would assume that uh, g by b and g by a are both positive, then you're going to have either, you're going to have an ellipse. Um, but if, if these have opposite signs, so if maybe g by a is negative but g by b, g by b is positive, then we're going to have um, a hyperbola. So if we're thinking about in two dimensions and we think about your general quadratic constraint, then it really reduces to either a line or one of your three conic sections. So. Our next task is going to be to take this and say, well, what if we have a quadratic constraint in three dimensions? What are the possible shapes that we can get? So that's where we're going next.